Hello, and welcome to American Amnesia. I'm your host, Cliff Garner. And uh, this is just a quick uh, quick hit. I'm going to just give some uh, very fast observations on the uh, Kavanaugh hearings today. I don't know how they're going to turn out. I, I think... Uh, I think he's. I think he's in. Personally, I, uh, if he isn't, then uh, I think that the Democrats will have a bit off more than they can chew. And whoever among the Republicans does not vote for him, I think will be pretty much voted out. Um, I think the outrage in their district will be high enough. And I think that the Democrats are going to do very poorly in the election that's coming up. Um, oh, by the way, these are my new spectacles. I I am now wearing. Uh, hang on, just adjust that just a bit. I am now wearing uh, uh, bifocals. I, uh, it's a concession to age I wasn't intending to make, but of course, you know, time time does that to you. Uh, let me try to give that just a little bit anyway. There you go, I think that's a little better. So, I, I, did, I watched uh, most of the uh, Kavanaugh proceedings today. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the prosecutor that the uh, Republicans hired, I, I can't think of her name at the moment, I, I did find her to be uh, quite good, actually. I think, I think it was the right move. I think that... Uh, in spite of what I hear all the uh, people on Fox saying, I think that uh, she toned down things and uh, and actually um, she actually tripped up uh, for it on quite a bit. She did exactly what she was supposed to do. She uh, she was disarming. She was not threatening, and she pulled the truth out. Uh, there were several things that she pulled out of Ford that uh, uh, probably uh, would not have been as easy to do had she been a more, uh, say, hostile uh, type of a questioner. And uh, so I, I found that beautiful. Uh, she got she pulled when she pulled out the stuff on on her on Ford uh, traveling to uh, Tahiti and uh, Hawaii and. These wonderful places on airplanes, but she just couldn't get on the plane and just come to D.C. right away. That uh, put the light of what she was saying. Somebody and 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 see that's the thing here. I think that with Ford, what you do have is somebody that uh, that believes what they're saying, and in in a rather general way. I, I think that she did experience something and that uh, it wasn't pleasant and she's able to conjure that up and, and talk about it. Um, she wasn't able to name Kavanaugh in 2012 when she first started talking about it. I mean, it, what can you do with this? I mean, I mean, it's like 30 years old then and it's another six years old now. Um, it uh, it's pretty pathetic, really. The um, the fact is is that uh, regardless of what ever happened to her, I don't think Kavanaugh did it. I, he doesn't act like he doesn't act like a man. He was trying to weasel out. He didn't use weasel words. He used definite verbs. His verbs were very strong ones. These are the first things out of his mouth. The only time he fudged at all was when he was talking about sometimes drinking too much. And that was it. I don't think he came off as an aggressive person. Now they, I hear them trying to play that game. And no, I don't think so. I think that his indignance is uh, actually uh, the proper uh, reaction to all this kind of nonsense. So uh, that uh, I, I would be indignant too. I think, uh, especially under those circumstances. Um, but as a person who has been a, 
an alcoholic. I do know that uh, it's hard to be honest about certain things, even even when you ri you know kick it. I mean, talking about them is a difficulty, and uh, blackouts are something that you don't like to talk about. So, uh, do I think he drinks to blacks out? No. Uh, has he drunk too much? Yeah, I'm going to guess a few times. Uh, that's even with beer uh, a possibility. Um, I don't. I won't speak for him. I mean, that's that's between him and God. But I, I think I think that he's honest enough about it that that what he did was uh, a little tricky. But at the same time, that that was the only place that I sensed any any fudging at all. And when they when they probed there, he. Uh, he got a little touchy. I, I understand that, and he he lashed at uh, oh, I can't think of her name. Uh, he apologized to her later, um, and uh, actually that was very classy what he did. I uh, I think that uh, she uh, wanted to go there a little deeper than he was willing to go, but at the same time I don't think she would have really gotten much out of it. Um, in fact, I think she knew that, and uh, and she did appreciate his candor. Uh, I think mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, that kind of honesty. I think we saw honesty from him all through, and the fudging was even an honest type of fudging. It was uh, it was something that touched and hurt, but it wasn't all that much. Oh, uh, and I I think the funniest part is when. Uh, um, one of them was one of the senators was going into uh, secret coding in his uh, in his yearbook. Uh, I, I I was wondering if he was going to start asking about poopy peachy pee pee jokes that he might have told when he was uh, six years old. I, I, I it just it just was that juvenile and uh, and idiotic and, and and that's that's see that's what you get for for buying into a scumbag like Avenatti. Uh, Avenatti is, is an idiot, uh, very pure and simple. He's a vicious, slimy idiot. And, and uh, you know, the way the Democratic Party is going, uh, he's perfect for leading them. <laughs> and he won't take them anywhere good. Um, now I hope that they uh, uh, repent and find their better angels, but I don't think they will. In fact, I'm sure they won't. They, uh, they're, I think they're lost. As a party, I think there's individuals within it that are probably uh, going to consider, reconsider what it is to be a member, especially if they're going to continue the way they are. Which I think they will. I think uh, that H.A. Goodman is right on the money. That they're going to, they're going to go after the socialist wing of the party and, uh, when they lose, and they're going to pretty much blame them and destroy them. And uh, and I think that uh, a lot of them will defect to the Greens. And uh, and some to the Libertarians. I mean, uh, very simply, uh, unless they're willing to go into socialism, I, I don't think that they, uh, I don't think that uh, the Greens are a good fit. I, a matter of fact, uh, I I, uh, I respect the Greens. I, I I'm an ex-socialist myself. I, I understand that uh, that uh, belief and uh, and uh, political convention, and uh, I and I understand why people have it. I mean, uh, on paper it sounds wonderful, but it just doesn't work that way. Um, it's uh, all theoretical, and uh, when it comes to practical application, it's rather poor. Um, there are social programs at work, but uh, they have to be tightly managed, and they uh, you have to keep the thieves out of them. Uh, just very, very simply, uh, it's, you put too much money in a centralized place; it's too easy to pilfer. And uh, and our social security is a is a warning, but it also is uh, potentially one of our better angels that was at work. I think that it that. Uh, it, it, Trump is actually talk, talking about saving it, which uh, you know this is this is unusual for Republicans, but it's good. This is this is a good trend uh, because there is going to be a social 
factor. I, I, I what would you call it? Uh, uh, adjunct, uh, addendum to whatever we do as a as a, an, a society, and, and uh, I think a humane society is the best. Uh, I don't like the idea of the force of the state behind it, but I think that uh, that that, uh, that to some extent, at least, that uh, it's inevitable. Um, but I, I think that uh, getting the meddling state out of things is, in, in general is a rather good thing. Uh, it, it, because it works better. It just simply works better. I mean, uh, bureaucrats are not to be trusted. They waste money and they, they, they tend to occupy their seat. That's why we need the reform that Fo Trump is doing so badly. Let's get some of these people out of their little seats that they're so content with and so happy to stay in and move them out and make them get real jobs. States need to do the same thing. They need to, they need to trim down, trim the fat. And uh, they, they, don't, they don't have a choice. They're going to have to because when they, when they go bankrupt, I don't think that it's fair to the rest of the country to, to leech off of them. And not only that, uh, well, well, I, I think there's going to have to be some kind of, I don't know about a bailout, but uh, there will have to be a, uh, an intervention by, by the federal government to force such states, uh, California, Illinois, and New York, and any other idiot states that decide to follow them, that they're going to have to revamp what they do. They're going to streamline. And they're going to have to uh, move forward. And they're going to have to quit being such a burden on their people. And Illinois and the corruption here, just the corruption alone needs to be reformed. Okay. So, so this is a, what we're going through is a, is a massive uh, reform. And there are people within the deep state that are for this. And that's, that's part of who's behind Trump. That's where the jobs are coming from. That's where he's got powerful people in the background who are in favor of him. Um, the military, uh, tend, I think, tends to see things this way, too. And, I, and I'm sure that the military will not, will not back a coup. Matter of fact, I think it will put one down. Uh, after that, I'd be a little afraid of what happens. But... Uh, but I'm, I'm saying that there are powerful forces that are that are in conflict right now within the country, and those that are internationalist uh, in orientation, uh, particularly your larger corporations that have gotten away from being American, and your banks, and all kinds of different types of bankers. That's why Soros is one of the one of the ones, and that's also why Pritzker is another. That these these buffoons need to be divested of power. That, uh, that takes some doing and, uh, and it takes some time. And, uh, and uh, I, think, I think that Trump is on the right track. I, I really do. I believe that things are going in the right direction. They, they have a good tra tra trajectory. And, uh, and I think that uh, with the coming election that the Republicans are going to win. I don't see, I don't see them losing anything in the Senate at the very least. As a matter of fact, I see them gaining. The Democrats overplayed their hand, and they this this Kavanaugh hearing they overplayed it very seriously. And I I knew they would. I knew they would. I just it's it's just the way they do things. They they can't leave it alone and just win. They have to crow about it. They have to they have to take it that next step. They have to dominate. And this is this is where it's going to cost them, and it has. And it will. It will cost them very seriously. So what we'll see is that uh, that this will lead to his elect, his uh, probably to his being put in. And and I do believe he will be. I believe he'll be put in. I believe that the uh, that the Democrats are going to go bonkers. The press is going to go absolutely catatonic. <clears throat> And the people are going to reject them in polls. I don't see anything else coming. 
I, I think that we have to break it down to that. And I think it's very simply going to be what happens. And it will lead to further further change, further reform. This is good. I think that uh, Kavanaugh is a good man. I think he will be an anchor on the, on the coming courts. Uh, and he... I don't know that he's going to get rid of Roe versus Wade. I, I rather actually don't hope he doesn't. Because I do see it as more of a state matter. And um, I, I have a real problem with legislating what I believe is right onto other people. And uh, this is a, a problem I do have with uh, certain people who uh, whom I agree with. I, I think that uh, I think that what we should do is we should educate people better. I think they should be aware of the option of adopt it, adoption. Carry a baby just to term and give them up for adoption. There's people who who want those children. And those children, those people are not these idiots that are going to sit there and sell them on the market either. These are good, kind people that really, really love children and want them. And that's the most important part, is that these children are loved. And that's the most humane thing of all. Killing babies just for the sake of that is not. We, we're not worshippers of Moloch. And we do have values. So this, this speaks terrible things about people that just kill babies. But by the same token, I'm not really keen on legislating that. Okay. Uh, and I don't, I don't think when it comes down to uh, an issue of law that Kavanaugh or really the whole court, I don't think can come out and say, let's get rid of this. He can't really do that. The opportunity doesn't present itself very often, and when it does, it generally is is a very specific case. And I think that uh, I think that case law and precedent and everything else is going to be considered. And just because you want a certain result doesn't mean you can force one. And I don't think that uh, I don't think that Kavanaugh would do that. And I think that he has great convictions, but I don't think that he would break that kind of a bond that, uh, that I think that he has with law. I think that he loves law, and I think he loves what it is. And I think that he also is within his conscience. I, I think he's, he's very comfortable in his skin. When he spoke, he was he was definite. He was sure. He was confident. He wasn't cocky. He was indignant. We understand that indignation. We truly do. And it is correct. And it was got, and it was directed at the right people. And when he overstepped it, he he apologized. And. She, she explained her position, that she had an alcoholic father. And uh, that's probably why she felt the way she did and looked at the way she did. And, and I could well imagine that a person who's been a lifelong teetotaler in Washington, D.C. probably looks askance at all the people around them. I can't imagine them not. Because there's a lot of drunks there. A lot of deal-making going on between them drinks. A lot of bending rules and things. And I think a guy like Kavanaugh, who can basically hold his liquor and uh, not really drink a whole lot of other things, I think he's quite aware of what goes on. And I also think that he finds it disgusting. And good for him. I know that Bush did, but who knows what he might have accepted. And that's because of his uh, being a, an internationalist, really. I mean, that that was his his thing. He was a, he was a neocon. He 
came from that milieu. His father was an internationalist as well. His grandfather was an internationalist before him. And his grandfather had worked with the Nazis. Probably participated in the businessman plot against uh, FDR. I understand his name is one of those that came up in that, that uh, context. I have to get into that sometime and uh, actually dig out, do some little bit more research on. But uh, but the business end plot is a really important thing, and that's kind of a, an equivalence of what we're seeing right now with uh, companies like Nike and uh, Apple uh, attacking Trump because uh, they're 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 probably more geared towards the Chinese than they are America anymore because it's where they got all their operations and they're saving tons of money by by exploiting slave labor. Oh, and you thought that they picked uh, Kaepernick because of the goodness of their heart. Wake up. The snowflakery is going to end. And it's going to end in a scream, we know. But it's going to just be a scream that nobody pays attention to because you've screamed so much before. We won't miss it. And when you come to your senses, then we'll talk to you. I hate to put it that way, but that's the way it is. So with Kavanaugh, we, we have a we have a really interesting situation. Like I say, I think that the the prosecutor, I, I forget her name now, um, handled it very well. I think she set things up. That the Democrats the, their fawning over Dr. Ford was actually over the top. It's just <laughs> There's only so much of this crap we can take, you know, without just wanting to throw up. And and uh, it, it, it's so transparent. Oh, you're so brave. Oh, okay, yeah, well, whatever. You put her up to it. Actually, you forced her into it. She asked for uh, anonymity, and you pushed her into the limelight. This could have been handled quite differently had... had, had uh, um, What's her name? Uh, uh, Feinstein handled it in a completely different manner. She could have handled it with a much greater discretion. And the organization had the discretion. They made sure that was in the record. And, and Feinstein sat there and dud, 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 dud. Because she was lying. She wasn't just fudging it. She was lying. She knew that there's a process. That poor woman didn't have to go through this. They could have handled it much more discreetly. They didn't want to do that. They wanted to destroy this guy. Couldn't curse them for it. Curse you, Dick Durbin. Curse you, Schumer. And curse you, Ms. Feinstein. All three of you. You've cursed yourselves. What you've brought down upon yourself is going to be a byword. And you deserve it. You deserve it for what you did to Dr. Ford, and you deserve it for what you did to Mr. Kavanaugh, and Judge Kavanaugh. So when he came in at the half point, and uh, the prosecutor kind of set it up. I mean, she did a fair, fair enough job setting it up, but I think I think it was the right decision to relieve her, because we had Lindsey Graham, who uh, just wow. You know, you, you you take a guy like him, and he's been in milk toast all these years. He's not afraid to talk to the press, and he's he's a he's a glib fellow. And he's he's one of these guys that goes along to get along as a rule. He did with Kagan, and he did with Sotomayor, and that's fine. I mean, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, the president did want them. He was going to get them. You know, he was going to get something. And when uh, Scalia died, I think that there was a lot of bad, <laughs> bad faith that was going on there, and I think that the Democrats didn't have a whole lot of choice. So w wonder if he was murdered. I think they were trying to keep that from being examined a little deeper. And they, uh, they gave up without too much of a fight. It was really kind of funny how fast they collapsed on that, especially with the rumors going around like they were. 
And they, they thought that Trump was going to bring that guy back? I don't think so. I don't think so. That man will never see the court. He will never see the court. And he might be a very worthy person, but because of his situation with, uh, with, uh, with Obama and with the Scalia thing, I don't think he'll ever see it. And, and that's fine with me. Um, but uh, just because they want to shut it down doesn't mean they will and doesn't mean they ought to. And I'm glad to see that, that the, at least some of these Republicans have found salvation. They found their balls. And when I heard Lindsey Graham come up and, and the indignation that he, <laughs> that he so eloquently directed at the Democrats, every word of it was deserved. Because he was a man who was of compromise, of working together, bipartisanship even. And he saw what they did. And he knew exactly what they did. And to disapprove of that is right. He did the right thing. He said the right thing. And it was glorious. The chills went up and down my spine, and it, it's like, oh my word, thank you, Lord. Because you don't see that every day. It was inspiring. Cornyn was good, too, and so were a couple others. And at the very end, uh, John Kennedy, <laughs> of all names, uh, the Republican John Kennedy, when he had... And he had Kavanaugh look him in the eye. He said, do you believe in God? He said, yes. He said, I want you to tell me, and tell me the truth. Did you do that? No, I did not. I didn't do that to Dr. Ford. I didn't do that to anybody. I don't think Kavanaugh would have been able to do that if he were lying. I think the nature of the man is there. And I don't think he could have done it. There are people out there that I, I know that they would lie in a heartbeat. I don't think he's one of them. So, that's it. Just some quick thoughts on uh, this latest thing here. I'll come back in, uh, in a couple of days and maybe maybe another quick hit. But I do have a couple more things on Turkey and uh, how it fits in with our um, our foreign policy and stuff coming up soon. Uh, but this is just like I say, a quick hit. I'm not even going to put music on it or anything. I need to get new music anyway. So. Until next time, take care.